Hey, everybody. Welcome. Can you guys hear me? Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to Math 3000. Um, I'm going to just preemptively say I am in doggy daycare at the moment. Uh, so I did my best to tire this one out in the back. We're fostering her. So hopefully she sleeps. I did my best. Um, but I apologize if she gets up in the middle of class. Um, okay, well, it's great to see everybody. Um, and um, so the plan for today is I, I just want to um, introduce myself, um, give you guys a chance to say hello, um, go through how the class is going to be structured and make sure that's clear for everybody. Um, and, and then we can start kind of talking about fruits. Um, so my name is Adam Spiegler. Uh, you guys are welcome to call me Adam. That's what I prefer. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, then call me something else that's nice. <laughs> um, but I prefer Adam. And, um, you know, it's great seeing a lot of you have, I've had in classes. I'm also the undergrad advisor. So um, I've interacted with a lot of you that way as well. Um, so if you do have any questions about advising, um, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me about that. Um, so I've been here at CU Denver. This is my third year. Um, I was coming from Chicago before that, um, Loyola University. And um, so I've got two years of on-campus experience and then, well, one and a half years of on-campus experience and then uh, one year of remote. So um, yeah, so let me, um, we have a LA for the semester. That means a learning assistant. So um, that means that's gonna be someone that's gonna help us facilitate um, the discussions in class and um, have some office hours as well. Um, so I just wanna give um, Lindsay a chance to say hello. So um, Lindsay was a student in Math 3000 with me last semester. Um, and so I think that she is gonna do a great job. Um, do you mind saying hello, Lindsay? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, like Adam said, my name is Lindsay. I am a math major with a focus on statistics. Uh, I'm technically a senior, but I'm in CU Denver's four plus one program. So I am working on my undergrad in math and my master's in statistics at the same time. So uh, it will take me two more years to graduate. Uh, I'm super excited to be LAing for Adam and get to know each of you over the course of the semester. My office hours are in the syllabus as well as the ID, so you all can see that there. Um, and then just a quick little, my pronouns are she, they. And so if no one's ever known anyone that has she, they pronouns, or even if you have some people do them differently, I prefer that you use those interchangeably. Um, it's a little, it's new. So if that takes some time or you find yourself gravitating towards just one of those, that's okay. Just something to keep in mind. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, so uh, for, for those that I've had, actually I had a number of you last semester, pretty much things are gonna go the same way um, as it did in whatever class you were with, in with me last semester. Um, so try and keep things active here as much as we can um, using breakout rooms, polling, uh, chatting, all of those sorts of things. Um, Particularly with this class, it's really, really important um, to have some time to discuss these ideas with your classmates. Um, because sometimes when you have a professor going through material and you're kind of sitting back in listening mode, you're a little bit more passive and you kind of just trust that I'm telling you the truth. Um, but when you're talking to students, you probably are, I'm not quite sure if this person's you know, correct. And you're kind of processing things at, at, at a higher level. And um, that's really, really useful um, in writing proofs is being able to identify where there might be gaps in the proof. Um, so that's how we'll kind of run things. Um, so just be prepared for that. You'll be working in groups, breakout rooms with you know three or so other students, not the entire class, um, maybe like a third of the class, a quarter of the class, and the rest of the class will, will be working through things um, together. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just, quickly go through. So we've got um, 21 students in the class. We've got 19 here. Um, so that's a good size. And I know we've got some students that are really far away um, that might not make it. So um, for those students that might be listening, I record all of these Zoom sessions and I'm going to post them all on YouTube. So if you're unable to come to a class, whatever we cover in class, 
that recording will be posted on YouTube. It takes about a day sometimes. So um, if you don't see it right away, it's processing and it'll be up there the next day. Um, okay, so as far as class goes, since we're gonna be working with each other, if, if you're someplace where you're comfortable turning your camera on, that's great. Um, if you've got some craziness going on in the background, such as this, um, and you wanna put a screensaver on behind you, that's fine. Um, and if you're really not comfortable doing that, I get it, that's okay. My preference is that people do it, but I understand that you might um, be somewhere that's not easy. But if you are gonna turn your camera on, please do it now so I can see all of your faces. And then I make a little chart so I can identify a face with a name. It's really nice for me to be able to see your faces because um, I don't really see anybody else these days. So if you're someplace comfortable, Pop your camera on. If you want to pop it back off, that's okay. Cool. We're in like pretty much mode here. Okay. Well, cool. So um, just going to kind of go through the attendance. So if you have a nickname where I mispronounce your name, please just let me know. Um, and yeah, otherwise, just, just say hello and maybe, um, you know, just a quick introduction of like where you are in your studies and what you're studying or whatever else you, you want to say. Um, so I'm going to, well, we'll do this alphabetically. So let's see, is, is um, Max here? That's me. Hi, sorry. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm a uh, math major. I'm not really sure uh, what my focus is yet, but um, really excited for this class. I love proofs, so. Uh, so, oh, I see. Okay, so do you go by Max or is it uh, McKenna? Oh, sorry, you went back on, on mute. Of course I did. Uh, I, I go by Max uh, or okay. McKenna, whichever is easier for you to remember. I answer to both. Okay, thanks. Well, nice to meet you. Uh, Nicole? Hi, I'm right here. Yep, hey, Nicole. Um, um, I'm a math major. I'm also hoping to do the four plus one program to get a bachelor's in math and a master's in statistics. And I'm hoping after the summer semester, I'll be able to apply to get into that program. So I'm really excited for that as well. Okay, great. Um, Casey? Hi there. Can you hear me? My mic is sometimes bad. Okay. Yep, I can hear you just fine. Yep. Um, I'm a, my name is Casey and I'm a chem major with a minor in math, so not as cool as you math majors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Zoe, or is it Zoe? It's Zoe. Zoe, okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm a data science major and I'm also pursuing a GIS certificate. And so, that's what I've got going on. Cool. Okay. So nice to see you. Um, uh, Kaden, saw you someplace, I think. Hello. Oh, hey, um, Kaden. My name is Kaden. I am an econ math dual major, so that's exciting. And I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few of those. That's a pretty uh, common major. If anyone is kind of on the fence between econ and math, we do have a nice program for that. So just let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, Mitchell. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Mitchell Gagliardi. I'm currently fulfilling the prerequisites to continue the dual master's program for econ and applied mathematics. Okay, thanks. Uh, Diana Lee? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I go by Diane, and my major is in econ and math. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, nice to see you again. Um, Gavin? See, is Gavin online? Don't see him. Okay. Um, Gavin, if you're out there listening, I'll probably reach out to you just to make sure everything is all right. I'm Carmel. Hi, I'm Carmel, and I'm currently majoring in math. All right. Uh, thanks, Carmel. Uh, Kenneth? Hi, my name is Kenneth, and I am also doing a BS in math. Cool. Um, Christina? Hi, I'm Christina. I'm a chem math major. Hey, 
Thanks, Christina. Um, Devin, how's it going? Um, see you there, Devin. You might be on mute or maybe you're um, someplace where you can't chat. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Devin. Just making sure. Um, welcome. Uh, Nate. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nathaniel and I'm a double major in math and economics. Uh, do, do you prefer to go by Nate or Nathaniel? Uh, Nate is fine. Okay. Okay. Nice to meet you, Nate. Um, Bill. Hey, I'm Bill, and I'm a data science major, which I think is a brand new major this year. Um, Indeed, it is. Yes. Um, that's right. So, yeah, the data science concentration area is uh, new for us this year. Um, so, if you have declared that, our first graduates with that will be in the spring since. Um, one of those required classes, 3376, is being taught for the first time this semester, and that's required for data science. Um, where, where are we at? Uh, Giselle. Hi, I'm Giselle. I'm a uh, dual major in the econ math program. I'm Good. back. <laughs> nice to see you again. Um, Hussein. Hi, uh, yes, uh, I'm Hussein, and uh, I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. All right, nice to meet you. Um, and Keenan? Um, Keenan Shaw, and I'm not sure if here. Uh, okay, and um, Jonathan? Hello, oh, I'm Jonathan. a senior, senior um, in mechanical engineering, trying to get a math minor so that's why i'm here i'm actually uh in your statistics class as well in like three hours well um i apologize if i recycle jokes you know um so if you'll you might hear the same material again uh but i'll do my best to mix it up um cool okay well nice to uh, nice to see you jonathan um do you prefer john or, or jonathan uh either or okay um and yu cheng don't think it's here. And um, so please uh, help me pronounce your name if you're able to turn your mic on. Is it Zuoudi Wen? Oh, yeah. You can pronounce uh, it as Judy. Jordi. Oh, okay. That, is that that's what you prefer? Or do you prefer um, me to try and say your name in Chinese? Oh, uh, you can call me Wen. Yeah. Okay, that's fine too. Okay. Well, uh, nice to meet you. So, are are you are you in China right now, or are you in in Denver? Yeah, I'm in China now, so it's okay. two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, and yes, if you do have trouble coming, um, I understand. And again, these these will be recorded. But that's great that you're here. Um, and please. You know, we, we love having you here. That's great. Thanks. Um, thanks, Wen. And um, I think that is, I think I got everybody. Is there someone I didn't call? Okay, um, great. So I think it's just nice to kind of connect the face to a name and um, give everybody a chance to say hi. Hopefully we get a chance to get to know each other well on this semester. So let me just, quickly um, go through some of the uh, kind of structure of the class. And um, if you have any questions, just, just let me know. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so here's all my information. You got the link for class. Um, here's my office hours. Um, I might have to tweak these um, depending on what happens <laughs> with this dog. Um, I might have to shift it so that um, they're kind of at the same time as when I teach, um, but th they'll be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They'll be on the days that we don't have class. Um, and I'm happy to meet anybody at, a, at another time if those, whatever it, it sets on doesn't work. Um, and yeah, Lindsay's office hours are up here as well. Um, and yeah, so as far as the class goes, um, you don't need to purchase any materials. Um, there's no technology. It's basically a writing class. Um, and the textbook is um, 
free. And so you can just click on the link over there and download a PDF. Um, and that's, that's all we'll be using for the semester. Um, and so kind of here's the general schedule. Um, and if we fall ahead or fall behind, we might tweak this a little bit. Um, so as you can see, we're, we're gonna kind of cover the material at, at a slightly different ordering as the textbook um, at first. And um, we'll have three exams, which are tentatively scheduled for March 3rd, April 7th, and whenever our exam is scheduled for um, finals week. So the third exam is not going to be a final exam um, in the sense that comprehensive counts more than the other things. It's just gonna be three evenly weighted exams that are really just gonna focus on the material that we've covered since the previous exam. Um, so each of those exams is 20% of your grade. So altogether, this is 60% of your grade. Um, and then um, the homework is 27% of your grade altogether. Um, and then we, we're gonna have some pre-class reading quizzes and those are gonna be about 13% of your, or no, it will be exactly 13% of your grade. Um, so how uh, the homework works, your first homework assignment is up. And generally speaking, these are gonna be due on Mondays. So like a typical week, we didn't have class this Monday, obviously, but if we had class this Monday and Wednesday, you would have a homework due on Monday with on the content that we covered in the previous week. And those assignments are due um, at 11.59 p.m. on Monday night. So it's not due before class. You can work on it after class. Um, so generally, those are going to be due on Mondays. I will just say um, for the first week, um, since it doesn't make sense to give you a homework assignment due on Monday about what we talk about today, um, next week's homework is, is due on Thursday night of next week. So just keep that in mind. Um, and that will be on stuff that we talk about today, but mostly stuff that we talk about on Monday. Um, and so those are going to be mostly as we get deeper into the class, you know, writing out proofs and um, it's, it's a, it's a process, you know, that um, sometimes it's not clear what is expected when you're writing a proof. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of work through some, some guidelines to keep in mind when, when you're doing these. And um, the reading quizzes, these are short. Um, they're really not intended to take like more than 10 minutes. Um, to do most of them looking at the time that it takes students to do them last semester, like five minutes. Um, but I'll put a little video most of the time and um, to help with that material, the video is probably like less than 10 minutes. Um, and then um, between the video, reading the textbook, it's not the most complicated questions. It's just making sure that we've got the basics down so that we can spend class working on the harder problems, um, which oftentimes you run out of time doing. So we'll kind of do some of the more basic things in the reading quizzes, and then we can spend time in class um, going through uh, proofs a little more carefully. Um, any, any questions about that? And um, if you haven't, taking a look, I just wanna show you um, the Canvas site. So here is kind of the opening page with uh, all of our info. And um, I, I organize things in modules. I know that different teachers might organize their Canvas pages differently. So this week is a, is a little bit different since we only have one class, but um, all of the materials that we cover in Zoom together, I post up ahead of time so that you can open these up while we're doing them. So I would highly recommend, um, we're gonna be working on worksheets that it might be useful to, to print them out or if you're writing on them um, on a tablet to just open those up in advance um, and uh, so you can fill them in. Um, that might be something useful. So um, over here are the slides that um, I've got on the other page. Um, and over here is a worksheet that we'll take a look at um, today before, before we go. And then the first homework assignment is over here. 
Uh, and just to kind of show you what this looks like. Um, so yeah, I don't know why this is here, but um, the homework assignment is, is PDF, so you can just click on it um, and open it up. And um, what I'd like you guys to do is um, just upload one file. So all of your uh, work should be in one file, either a PDF, a Word document, um, whatever uh, you prefer. Um, what I what I don't want is um, camera images because those get uploaded really bizarrely in Canvas. Um, so if you wrote things on paper, um, I would recommend using an app that can convert a bunch of pictures into a single PDF. Uh, and so one of such things um, is this uh, Adobe Scan, which is a free app. So if you have any technical issues with that, um, just let me know. And uh, so this is what a typical module would look like for a week. Um, so this is next week. And you, so um, for each day, I kind of, there's reading. So I think, you know, if you read these ahead of time, that might be helpful. It'll certainly help you with the quizzes. Um, and I just kind of picked out just the sections of the textbook um, in a PDF file. These are the materials that we'll be using. So these are some slides that we'll take a look at on Monday. And here's the worksheet that we'll do in class on Monday. And then uh, the same for Wednesday. And so down here, you can see kind of the work that is due for the week. So next week, you'll have a reading quiz before Monday's class, reading quiz before Wednesday's class, and then homework is due Thursday. And um, I should say that these reading quizzes are due um, 15 minutes before class starts. So they're due at 1045. And they're, for the most part, going to be multiple choice, like three or four. I think the first quiz has five multiple choice questions. Um, and so these are videos. Here are three short videos to help you with that. Um, and so I would suggest, you know, taking a look at these videos and then giving the quiz a chance. So that's kind of how I uh, structure things. Any any questions? Uh, and I'm definitely open to suggestions. So um, if you have another teacher that does things that found out something really cool in Canvas and it's been really nice in that class, just let me know and I, I can try and um, do the same. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so, yep, so here's our information again, um, you know, that I think we've talked about uh, the grading scheme. It's probably what people are um, most curious about initially. Um, so we got two exams during the semester. I think we've talked about this. Um, any questions? Uh, here's our text. Uh, again, if you want a bound copy, uh, I bought one. They're not expensive, but the binding is not very good. Um, but uh, it's it's actually, I'm old school, so I like having uh, actual text. So if that's something you like, um, I think it's pretty, it, it was probably less than 20 bucks. I don't, I don't remember what it was exactly. Um, I got a hardback one instead of a bound one for really cheap as well. It was only like 20 bucks too. On, um, yeah. The, that's what I, I, I got a hardback one too. Um, take it easy oh. on the binding. That's, that's gotcha. fine. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Um, okay, and yeah, so as far as things go in class, we kind of talked about this um, a bit, but um, yeah, you know, just make sure you, your screen name has the name that you prefer to be called by. Um, if your camera is turned on, that's awesome. Um, when you come into class, it will by default be on you. Um, and so if you want to talk, you can raise your hand. Um, you know, sometimes I just stop and say, are there any questions at that point? You don't need to raise your hand. You can just un unmute yourself um, and ask. 
I'm pretty casual. So if you want to interrupt me during class, that, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, and so at times just be prepared. Um, if I call on somebody, it's just not trying to put anybody on the spot. I just like making sure that everybody has a chance um, to, to check in and see how they're doing. Um, oftentimes we, we can do that with a chat too. So sometimes I'll ask a question and then ask everybody to chat their answer to me. Um, and therefore nobody is individually put on the spot. Okay, and then um, if Zoom crashes, I um, got lucky last semester. So I feel like we're, we're due for some Zoom crashes this semester, but let's hope not. Um, if it crashes on me, then um, just stay in the room. I, you won't get kicked out of the room. Um, just give me a few minutes to, to log back in. I'll probably just need to log back in and it doesn't take um, too long. If the issue is, um, is more severe, um, like my internet is down or something like that, then um, I'll update the announcement. I'll probably just open up my iPhone and try and post an announcement um, in Canvas to tell you like, hey, um, come back in five minutes or, um, you know, classes, I'll record whatever we were planning offline. That hasn't happened, um, but I just want to make sure we cover um, any situations. Um, if, if you get kicked out um, of Zoom, then oftentimes just logging out and then logging back in works. Um, you might want to restart your computer um, as well. Those are some things that are useful. And if you're really stuck and your internet is out, you can consider at least using your iPhone um, and using your data plan on your, or whatever phone you have, um, using the Zoom app on, on a smartphone. Um, it's not ideal, but if you're cut off, that, that's an option. Okay. So uh, before we get started with our first um, question, are, are any questions at all about the class, life, been an eventful break, I bet. Um, okay, um, so yeah, so what we're gonna talk about in this semester is learning how to write mathematical proofs. Um, and so in some sense, they're, they're essays. And just like you learned how to write an English essay, um, you know, with certain rules that you try and stay in, and then you have certain things where you can express your own style with it, same way with proofs. There are certain things that you know we wanna keep hard to, and then within that you have some realm to pick up your own, own style of writing. So um, before we jump into proofs and logic, um, I just wanna take a look at some examples of things that might be trying to um, justify a statement. So um, we'll talk about this next time, um, but just so since I use the term, like when we say statement in mathematics, that means this is something that's either true or false. So, um, you know, for example, two is an even number, that's true. Three is an even number, that's false. Those are two statements though. And our goal is to try and prove whether or not those things are true or false. Um, not all sentences in English are what we would consider mathematical statements. Um, so for example, um, what's your favorite color, right? That's a that's a question, that's not a statement. That's something that's neither true nor false. But this is something we'll, we'll take a look at um, more next time. So here the statement is, okay, for n bigger than or equal to three, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon with n sides is 180 times n minus two. So for example, here is a polygon got this one, um, with six sides. And the proof here is, okay, when we add these diagonals, we get some triangles. 
we get four of them. And this is this relation that this is equal to n minus two in that case. So we have six sides. That gives us four triangles. Each of those four triangles, their angles should add up to 180. So that's the gist of the proof. And so I'd like you to just kind of consider this statement and I'm going to open up a poll just to get a pulse of what people are, are thinking. So um, do you think this statement is true, meaning um, the interior angles are going to add up to n minus 2 times 180? And um, if you do think it's true or false, whatever, then kind of also comment on um, how good the justification is um, or how bad the justification is. Now, these are anonymous. These are not um, counting towards your grade. It's just trying to get a sense of seeing what, what people are thinking. All right, take another uh, 10 seconds, please, if you haven't gotten your response in, um, just a kind of informal reaction to this. Um, okay, uh, so thanks for the responses. Here is um, where this worked out. So you, you can see the results for the, the quiz. Good, so, um, okay, so people that, the sense was that this seems to be true. Some people weren't sure um, and were on the fence. Nobody said the statement is false, okay? And this is a true statement. So the question is, um, you know, how can we mathematically establish that this is true using logic? And so here's some logic down below. And the question is, is that logic um, fully sound? Is this a complete explanation or um, a wrong explanation or are we missing some details? And so uh, it seems like the most common response was, seems right, but we're missing some details. Does somebody want to share what um, a de one detail might be either by, um, by talking or by, um, by chatting it in, I can, you can either chat it to everybody or if you want to just chat it to me, that's, that's fine too, I think. But it's great to talk. Is, that, is anyone, one of the seven people or anybody else that said, ah, it's missing some details. What, what about that proof was unsettling to you? Yeah, okay, thank you, um, Mitchell. So Mitchell just chatted something in. Um, okay, the proofs, oh, I see, I missed this chat before. The proofs text seems to be locked. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that after class. Um, so there are some logical facts that we accept as true. So such as um, the triangles, angles add up to 180. So um, this is kind of something good to think about. And if anybody else has some other ideas, I see them coming in, feel free to chat them in the meantime. Um, and so this is a tricky part of proofs is like, what, it, what things are, can we take as fact and what things do we need to justify? Um, and there's a, there's a fine line with that. And so 
um, let me just say that when you're writing these proofs, um, you shouldn't be writing them to me. You should be writing them towards like a classmate, um, meaning that you should really try and justify things um, completely. If you were trying to explain this to somebody else in the class, that they would not have any questions about your logic. So um, the sum of the angles being 180 degrees, that's something that we can take as a fact. Um, so that's okay. But that's a totally good question to raise. And it's gonna be a great area sometime. And so um, the safer thing to do is err on the side of caution or shoot me an email and say, I'm writing this proof, so I need to justify this part of the proof. Um, but that's something that you wanna keep in mind. Um, yeah, and so yeah, uh, Diane said that the um, n needs to be bigger than three. And so if I have a polygon with three sides, one, two, three, we know that the sum of these angles is gonna be 180 degrees. And our n in this case is three. So it's, it's kind of like a really basic case, but it still works. Um, that formula does hold if n is equal to three. Um, but this is good. That, that's kind of a special case because we can't draw any diagonals in a triangle. Um, so so n equals three, that's kind of a special case where we kind of, we're assuming that as fact, um, that the sum of the angles is 180. And then for n bigger than three, we can use this um, diagonal approach. Um, any any other comments? Um, so I think one thing that you might want to think about here um, for me, I think that's a big detail. That's, that's really the heart here is once I justify that, then I know each one is 180 degrees and, and we're done with that. Um, and so I think there needs to be some justification why that goes. We can see it in this picture. It worked for N equals six. Why does it work for seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and so on? So uh, is anybody who has their foot in writing proofs um, think about what proof technique might be successful here. Uh, isn't this a direct proof? Um, so we've got like a, in some sense it, it is, it's, it's going to be like a, a special type of direct proof. So we have like a special case and then we're trying to prove it in general, when we have other values of n being four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and so if you've heard of this before, this is where uh, proof techniques such as induction um, will come in handy. So we'll take a look at this kind of in the middle of the semester. So that will be um, the material on exam two. And um, so this is the part that I think is, is really, really critical when we're talking with each other in breakout rooms. Um, I know it can be touchy to kind of critique each other's work, but you know we're not gonna make any judgment here. So hopefully if someone points out something with your work, don't take that personally, just try and um, explain your perspective um, and kind of be respectful to other people as, as well. It's okay to correct each other, just try and keep it, um, respectful. Um, but, you know, this is this is really great skill when you're in these breakout rooms to kind of say, okay, here's what somebody suggests. And 
um, to try and see where there might be some holes in that. And that's not kind of criticizing someone's work, it's just trying to polish it up. Uh, any, any questions? So uh, the statement is true. The proof is reasonable. Um, we just need to kind of be able to um, really fill in this detail over here. And that's where induction um, we'll see will be helpful. Okay, so um, here's another statement. So this would be the statement here. And um, the justification here is this has been, um, they've run experiments and the experiments check out, that's true. So um, same question again, which is, do you think this statement is true, first of all? And if so, um, do you think that showing that it's true by experiment uh, is a good justification for that? Uh, okay, great. Thanks um, for the responses. So um, people were, again, thinking that this is true and the explanation here was a little bit more complete by doing experiments. So if you kind of think about what would an experiment look like to test this, right, you've got two inputs and you got one output. So you might think about what happens if we have a mass of one kilogram that has a certain acceleration, that gives me three, let's kind of measure this experimentally and make sure that that force maps out. And so um, you could do this for a bunch of values for mass and acceleration and check to see if it works. Um, and in fact, this doesn't work in all cases. Then when um, know where this law might break down. So uh, something like a black hole, okay, or just something with um, a lot of gravity. This doesn't hold in that kind of special case, as well as objects that are moving um, really, really fast. So when an object is moving close to the speed of light, this also doesn't, there are corrections that, there are things that you could do, but there's corrections to this for some cases. Um, so when we're kind of trying to prove something, it needs to really be a, a series of logical connections. So experiments are, are really not going to be enough to convince someone that it's going to work always. So let's just kind of keep that in mind. Um, any questions, thoughts on that? Okay. Same uh, question again um, with number three.
All right, take another uh, 10 seconds, please, if you didn't get your response in yet. Okay, so uh, we've got some yeses, not quite complete, was the most common one. Uh, somebody said no, and we had a couple of people that were on the fence. Um, the one response of no, don't wanna put you on the spot, so feel free to stay anonymous, but um, if you wanna kind of share your justification, that's true, this, this statement is, is not true. Um, okay, so I'm curious if um, that was kind of a, a gut reaction or, um, or whether you were aware of the, the property. But um, this, I would say, is pretty similar to the previous one in that we really don't want, this is kind of doing experiments again. Um, and we want to try and generalize this to handle all values of n. So just because it works for a bunch of values doesn't mean it works for all of them. And in fact, um, the first one that doesn't work is that. So uh, 4 billion and, and sorry, um, 4 trillion some odd. Um, I think I missed. Uh, let's see, four, yeah, what is that? That's four trillion some odd stuff, yeah. Um, so I, I will say that, you know, th this is not bad, like doing things numerically with computers that are really, really fast at doing these things are a good way of checking this. Um, but just because you see that it checks for all of them doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So this might give you some evidence that it's true, and then your goal would be to try and prove that it's true. Um, but again, this one doesn't work, and we can disprove it by giving a counterexample. And so uh, not only will we learn how to prove that things are true, we'll also think about how we can convince someone that a statement is false. Uh, okay, yeah, so sorry, uh, fourth one here is saying the statement here is any real valued continuous function is differentiable except at some isolated points. So um, one thing that you might wanna think about since we've got like a function of one variable, here's some open interval If this function is continuous, it might not be differentiable. It might have some corners, um, but this is saying that those corners are gonna be isolated things. And um, so this statement was believed to be true. Um, but in fact, this is actually a false statement. So this was actually proved um, false in like, uh, where a counterexample was um, provided. Um, and so, yeah, if you're curious about that, I'll, I'll put up the solutions online, but it's called the Weierstrauss function. And it's a, really bizarre function. It's just a function that has, as it's almost like a fractal sort of thing. As you keep zooming in on the graph, you just see more and more corners in there. Um, okay, so 
Um, that was kind of the, the gist for today. I just wanted to get the chance to say uh, hello to everybody and just try and put our critical thinking caps on about when we're reading a proof, what are some of the things that, that we should be um, looking for? So um, just to kind of summarize a couple of things, is, well, how can we determine whether a statement is true or false? Okay, we'll start with, I wanna show that something is true. How do we prove that something is true? Um, this is what is called a mathematical proof. And what that means, it's a series of connected logical arguments. So generally, we start with some assumptions. Based on those assumptions, we make a bunch of logical statements that are connected to each other, and then we get our conclusion. So um, that's, that's the goal there. And so that means in order to write proof, we need to brush up on some logic. So that's what we're gonna focus on uh, for the first couple of classes. So the reading quiz um, for Monday is going to be on statements. Um, how do we connect statements with and and or and, and other types of things. And then we'll, we'll jump into that in more detail together in class. Um, so this kind of logical argument right, it needs to be convincing. And um, here, the burden, it's different than say like the US legal system where you give someone is accused of committing a crime, you give them the benefit of the doubt, you assume that they're innocent and you need to show beyond a reasonable doubt that, um, that, that they're guilty. Um, with proofs, it kind of works the other way. We kind of assume It is kind of false and you need to convince someone beyond the reasonable doubt. So there, there can't be any kind of gray area in that justification. Uh, so that means like checking the first one billion numbers or whatever it is um, gives you some evidence, but that would be something that's not convincing enough because you would need to think, well, does it hold for n bigger than, than that? How do we show that it proves for all such n? Um, and so these, these would be good comments when someone's explaining how they prove something um, to point out in their, in their work. Um, and I, I will say that one really, really nice thing uh, about logic, mathematical proof. Um, we tend to be living in a world these days where truth seems to be somewhat subjective, um, which, is, which is sad depending on where you're getting your news from. And um, with proofs, right, it's very like anti-authoritative in that like, hey, no matter what, anybody tells me I can convince them beyond the reasonable doubt that this thing is true. And if you want to argue with me, you know, I've got all of the facts right here. Um, so these are going to be, you know, very, very sound logical arguments where there shouldn't be any room for doubt. And I, I think the um, tricky thing that we'll work through and I'm understanding about it is just kind of knowing how much detail you need to provide in your proofs. And that's something that just comes with some practice. 
so as you're getting used to that, if you have some questions when you're working on proofs, the first homework assignment next week is actually just going to be um, the logic. So we won't get into proofs just yet. But as we start to get there, um, you know, just we'll, we'll kind of come together as a class at a good point of how much detail uh, do we need to include. Um, all right. Well, are there any other questions? Okay, so um, well, it's nice to meet you all today. I'm sorry that I did a lot of talking. Um, we'll be sure that in class on Monday, um, you guys will be working with each other. So um, please just remember to um, look over the videos or read the textbook. The quiz is uh, will be open tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Um, and it's due Monday before class. Um, so it shouldn't, again, if you're trying to budget your time, I wouldn't say that at most a half hour is, is what it should take, um, probably closer to, to 15 minutes um, between watching the videos and, and answering the questions. And um, if you wanna get started on the homework, you can, um, but the homework again is gonna be on the stuff that we cover on Monday. Um, okay, well, nice to meet you all. If you wanna hang around, if you have any questions, feel free to stick around. Um, otherwise, have a nice weekend. That was a short week. <laughs> and I will see you guys uh, next week on Monday.